The Daisy Frost Line DLC is finally here for all to enjoy. I was lucky enough to be invited to the official playtest before release and found out the hard way how brutal the map really can be. So, to help you, I compiled a list of what I feel to be the most important tips for the flood of new survivors that will be exploring Sakal to survive. Number 1. Fire Making Fire starting is going to be your bread and butter on Sakal, as you need it to survive the freezing cold environment. Make sure to always carry a lighter, matches, or at least have a knife so you can cut bark off trees to combine with one short stick to start a fire. Fires are pretty self-explanatory. You drop a piece of kindling on the ground, like paper, bark, rags, a bandage, whatever, and you ignite it with your fire starter. Load it up with short sticks or firewood once lighted, and you'll get a fire that will warm you up and give you the much needed heat buffer to keep you alive in the frigid cold. Be mindful of where you start a fire though, as people will be able to spot you and hunt you down if you make your camp location too visible. You can always try to tuck your fire in a clump of trees to hide as much smoke and light as possible. Number 2. Warm Clothes While making a fire is a basic essential to surviving the cold airs of Sakal, well-insulated clothing is crucial to maintaining your heat for longer periods of time. With the new temperature system implemented in the 1.26 update, there are now a few factors that determine how efficiently your character can get warm and stay warm. Without going into extreme detail, the simple idea is to have as much best insulated clothing as possible. Rather than a level 2 or even 1 heat buff, as indicated by the plus icons on your temperature bar, a full outfit of high to best insulated clothes will allow you to stay warmer for much longer durations, giving you a 3 plus heat buffer. With that, it makes it easier to travel, avoid illness, and so on. While we're talking about it, number three is illness. As a result of staying cold for too long, Daisy Vets may already know that you can get a nagging, annoying cold that causes you to cough, sneeze, and make you an audible target for zombies and players alike. However, a new stage to this illness was added in the new update, Pneumonia. Pneumonia is the new stage three of the cold in DayZ. You'll know it when you have it. Your character will sound like they're struggling to breathe and at the same time you will begin to lose health and die pretty rapidly if untreated. As far as I know, you need multiple rounds of tetracycline to cure it, but most players who let their colds get this bad end up dying. It's honestly best to just simply stay warm, well fed, and hydrated to avoid colds in the first place. If you end up getting one, your number one goal should be to fight it. Take a vitamin, tetra, keep all your vitals at least in the white, sit by a fire and get a max heat buff. All of these actions will help you stay as healthy as possible and avoid dying to disease. Number four, new medicine. While we're on the topic of medicine and staying healthy, there is actually a new blue pill bottle you can find around Sakal. These pills are used to treat metal poisoning and can actually purify water. As I'll get into it later, actions like drinking dirty water or trying to eat snow for hydration can make you extremely sick and cause nausea, dizziness, and puts you in a bad situation. If you end up needing to drink bad water, make sure to fill it into a bottle and use these pills to purify it first. Number five, water springs. Another change from other official daisy maps is the clean water supply. Most daisy survivors will be used to the standard pump wells found in the center of most villages, towns, and cities across Chinaris or Livonia. But on Sakal, the clean drinking water supply is actually found along dirt hiking trails away from the towns. At the end of these trails, you'll find marked water reservoirs. These provide clean spring water that is 100% good to drink. Number six, snow drinking. As mentioned before, you can actually eat snow or fill containers with snow to fill your hydration with, but you should not drink without purifying the water. The blue pills we mentioned earlier will purify tainted snow water, or you can use the new filtering bottles. <laughs> So, number seven, filtering bottles. Yes, there are water bottles that filter themselves that you can use to instantly provide yourself with clean snow water to drink. All you need to do is hold it in hand, find a patch of snow, and hold your action button down while looking at the snow to fill your bottle. It will be instantly clean to drink. They do have limited uses though, so it may be best to save for emergencies. 
8. Heating food. Another change to the temperature system in DayZ has to do with food. On Sakal, most canned or prepackaged goods will be frozen upon discovery across the map. Can I eat or drink them without thawing them out first? This can be done by carrying them in your inventory to a defrost via body heat over time, or you can now place them on the stove or grill tops on fireplaces to thaw out. <laughs> Drinking slash eating warm food, as indicated with an orange label, will actually warm you up as well. On top of this, food that you cook fully, like steaks, fillets, etc., or that you just simply leave on the stove for too long, can get hot, as indicated by a red label. And you need to let it cool down to warm or have no temperature indicator. Otherwise, you will take damage from eating food that's too hot. Speaking of food, number nine is fishing. Fishing is going to be your best friend while surviving a desolate, frozen island. It's certainly the most accessible way to feed you and your friends, and very easy to do on the go. You can find manufactured hooks and rods across the coast, but you can also just carry a rope and craft hooks with short sticks or bones. All you need to do is combine a rope with a long stick to craft a rod, use a knife or digging tool in a grassy area to dig up worms to attach to your hook, put the hook on your rod, and fish. You'll need to remember that fishing has changed from a static hold and wait until you RNG catch something, into more of a, I guess, interactive system where you need to perform a timing release to catch a fish successfully. It's simple. All you do is hold down your action button and let it go when you see a rod get pulled down and hear a splash indicator. Number 10. Do not eat predators. In previous updates, predators like wolves and bears were seen as threats only to the unexperienced or undergeared players. To everyone else, they were an easy way to find a quick meal. But not anymore. In 1.26, predator meats actually can give you a new type of food poisoning. Some say there's a percentage chance of not getting sick or you can take a vitamin before eating to improve your odds of staying healthy, but honestly, I don't know if these are true. And personally, I would just avoid eating wolves and bears until it's an absolute emergency and necessity. Number 11 though, wolf headdress. The one thing about killing wolves is you can cut them up for bones to make into knives or hooks, use their guts to turn into rope, and you can now get the new wolf headdress to keep you warm. There's no crafting involved, simply put down a wolf, cut it up, and you should be able to get its headdress. Number 12, altitude. As mentioned before, the new temperature system has quite a few contributing factors that determine your ability to stay warm. One of these to consider is altitude. Sakal is very mountainous, and quite a few POIs on the map are located high up, which means these locations will also be very cold, especially at night. This may be obvious to some, but I feel it's a very overlooked idea when you're running around in Daisy, and it can be easy to forget, but also costly on a map like this. 13. Hot Springs as of the Sakal playtest, you can find hot springs around the map that can actually give you an easy heat buff by standing in the shallow waters. They're mostly found in the central area of the main island and are extremely convenient breaks from the repetitive fire making you may find yourself doing on this map. Be careful though, as standing in one for too long will cause your temperature to spike up to red and cause you damage. 14. Spawns to wrap up this video, I want to give you two navigation tips for you to find your bearings and understand the basics of where to go. So I feel like it's probably useful to know that you're going to spawn on the northern coast of the main island. The progression as of initial release is from north to south, meaning that the further south you go, the better the loot tiers get, well, at least in theory. So you'll want to head south to get your hands on better equipment from your spawn point. But how do you get there? Fifteen power lines and marked trails. When you get deeper into the island, it can be very easy to find yourself lost in the dense forests and seemingly endless mountaintops. So make sure to be on the lookout for power lines. Yes, power lines are just as useful on Sakal as they are on every other official map to reroute yourself back to civilization. You can also find pole marked trails in the snow that lead you around the map as well. I hope you found these tips useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and sub for more Daisy informative videos and survival live streams. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.